You've probably seen all of the headlines and the social media posts about the Surgeon General calling for cancer warning labels on alcohol. In this bonus episode, I wanted to explain what this means, why alcohol causes cancer, why everyone who drinks doesn't just get a bunch of cancer, and what this means for us. back to the Sober Powered Podcast. I'm your host, Jill, and today we're talking about cancer. Social media isn't the best place to get information, so I wanted to release this episode to just have all the info in one place for you. So we've known that alcohol is a carcinogen for a long time. This is not new news. The International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified alcohol as a group one carcinogen since 1988. In 2010, it was found that there is no generally safe threshold for alcohol consumption. And in 2021, it was found that there is no safe level of alcohol for brain health and even moderate drinking shrinks the brain. So this is old news, but the benefit of putting cancer warning labels on alcohol bottles is it just gets the message out there. A recent study from the National Cancer Institute found that about 50% of Americans don't know that alcohol causes cancer. And many people that do know think it's more of just a liquor thing. And that's what we say to ourselves too, right? Oh, it's just wine and beer. At least it's not liquor. But it's the actual alcohol. It's not the vehicle that the alcohol gets to you in. When you drink alcohol, your body identifies it as a toxin, something that takes priority to be eliminated so that it doesn't damage your body. So the body will start to metabolize it and it's first converted into something called acetaldehyde, which is a toxic and carcinogenic compound. Acetaldehyde is actually 10 times more toxic than ethanol, which is just alcohol. So one common misconception that I've seen is that there are additives in alcohol that are carcinogenic. I've seen people mention things like arsenic or benzene, and that's not the case. It's the actual alcohol that is a carcinogen. And then your body converts it into something that's even more toxic than the alcohol that you were drinking. And then after acetaldehyde, it eventually gets converted into non-toxic things that can be eliminated from the body. But acetaldehyde will actually damage DNA and prevent DNA repair. And this can cause mutations that can result in cancer. The normal typical path is alcohol gets broken down by alcohol dehydrogenase, which is an enzyme, and then acetaldehyde gets broken down by aldehyde dehydrogenase, another enzyme, into water and carbon dioxide, and then it's eliminated. But if you're a heavy drinker and or a regular drinker, which it's highly likely that you are if you're listening to the Sober Powered Podcast, the liver gets overwhelmed by all of the alcohol that you're drinking. The liver can only process one standard drink an hour. And remember, the body sees alcohol as a toxin, as a poison. So what happens is other pathways for metabolizing alcohol get turned on. So one of those is the microsomal ethanol oxidizing system. And the problem with this pathway is it generates free radicals. You've probably heard about free radicals in the context of antioxidants or in excessive exposure to UV light through tanning. Free radicals can damage DNA. They can cause skin cancer. So free radicals are also produced by the metabolism of alcohol using this MEOS pathway. Normally, we have a balance of free radical production and antioxidant removal, but heavy drinking offsets this balance because now you have to recruit other pathways to process all of the alcohol that you're drinking, increasing the amount of free radicals in your body. Another pathway can turn on 
in heavy and or regular drinkers, which utilizes the pancreas. And this is why sometimes people that are very heavy long-term drinkers can develop pancreatitis or diabetes because the pancreas is not meant to be processing alcohol. So because it's not supposed to be doing that, it's getting damaged in the process. So if we're talking about these enzymes and how the body processes alcohol, it's important to say too that women generally will produce less of the enzymes that break down alcohol than men. So this is why women will typically have more alcohol-related medical issues than men do, or they just show up much sooner. This is why too cirrhosis rates for women increase much faster than they did for men. Another way that alcohol can contribute to cancer risk is it increases estrogen levels, especially in women, so it's linked to a higher risk of breast cancer. Also, chronic heavy drinking impairs our immune system, and we kind of need our immune system to detect and destroy cancer cells. So it reduces the ability for your body to just naturally regulate any weird cells that pop up. So to summarize, it is the actual alcohol that you are drinking that is carcinogenic. It's not additives or toxic things that ended up in the alcohol, it is the alcohol. Your body will convert alcohol into something that's 10 times more toxic, and the longer that sits in your body, and the more alcohol you drink, the more you're increasing your risk. So you might be wondering, why doesn't everybody just get cancer from drinking? Well, genetics, lifestyle, random chance, also how good your immune system is, because remember I said the immune system detects and destroys cancer cells. But in relation to alcohol, genetics will influence how well your body processes alcohol. So some people have really efficient enzymes and they process alcohol very well. So because they process it very well, that toxic intermediate acetaldehyde is quickly eliminated from their body. Other people process alcohol slowly. So because of that, the toxic intermediate acetaldehyde is eliminated slowly from the body. So this means it has more time to hang out and cause damage to your body. You can't control what kind of alcohol metabolizing genetics that you have, but one signal here is what type of drinker you are. I was a daily drinker. I probably processed alcohol pretty well. I could drink every day because I didn't get overwhelming hangovers. If you don't process alcohol as well, you probably feel worse when you drink because acetaldehyde makes us feel sick. It's responsible for something that's always been known as the Asian flush, where a lot of people of East Asian descent have genetics where they can't drink alcohol because there's too much acetaldehyde buildup and it makes them flush and feel sick. This is exactly how ant abuse works. It influences the metabolism of alcohol and the enzymes in the process, so acetaldehyde builds up in your body and makes you feel ill. So not everybody will get cancer from drinking, but you don't know which type of person you are. You don't know exactly what your genetics are. So let me explain some stats. Alcohol is known to be carcinogenic to the oral cavity, pharynx, larynx, esophagus, colorectal, liver, and female breast. In 2020, approximately 4% of all new cancer cases worldwide were attributed to drinking. In the US, Alcohol is responsible for about 5.6% of cancer cases and 4% of cancer deaths annually. And this is not just the hardcore party people. Moderate drinkers have a 1.8 times higher risk of developing all of those cancers that I mentioned compared to non-drinkers. Heavy drinkers have a five times increased risk in developing those cancers. And your risk could be even higher depending on your genetics, like if cancer runs in your family, for example. Having one drink a day increases the risk of developing breast cancer by 7 to 10%. And for women that drink two to three drinks per day, the risk increases by about 20%. And a bottle of wine is five drinks a day. Heavy drinking will increase the risk of esophageal cancer by up to seven times compared to non-drinkers. And smoking and drinking together 
really increase the risk. People that have more than five to six drinks a day and who smoke have a 50 times increase for developing throat, voice box, or esophageal cancer. So heavy drinking by itself might increase throat cancer risk by about five times, but if you smoke and drink, it can increase the risk to 30 times. And if you think about all the cancers that I mentioned that alcohol contributes to, it's all the places that alcohol visits. So it's the whole GI tract, it's the liver where alcohol is processed, and then the breast because of just how alcohol impacts the body. And again, a lot of people think as long as they don't drink liquor, they're okay. But cancer risk is linked to the actual ethanol, aka alcohol, that you're drinking. The vehicle that it comes in doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's beer or liquor or a really expensive fancy bottle of wine. It all has the same risk. And studies suggest, too, that about 27 percent of alcohol-related cancer cases could be avoided if that person reduced their drinking if they were able or just stopped drinking entirely. That's a lot of cases, 27 percent. You may also be wondering, well, how long does it take for cancer risk to decrease after I quit drinking? It's going to take some time. You will be at elevated risk for a while, and the time it takes for that to go down to that of someone who never drank depends on how many years you drank, the frequency, the intensity, your overall genetics, your lifestyle, your health, if cancer runs in your family, a lot of different things. But quitting drinking and having a healthy lifestyle are two things that you can do to get yourself on the right track. So what does this new information about putting cancer warning labels on alcohol do for us? Well, if people want to get drunk and party, they're going to do it. I knew that alcohol was bad. I knew it caused cancer. I knew that really bad things could happen to my health. I knew that I could get into an accident, yet I still continued to drink. So if you want to drink, you're going to drink. This doesn't really deter you because it's very easy to think, oh, not me. But what this will do is just what happened with cigarettes. It's going to start to go out of style. We've already seen some changes shifting in the way that people, especially the younger generations, see alcohol. And I think eventually, it may take a couple decades, but eventually alcohol will be seen in a similar way. If you enjoyed this episode and it was informative for you, I hope that you will consider sharing it when you see people talking about alcohol and cancer risk so we can get the information out there and maybe we can change that stat that 50% of Americans don't really understand that alcohol causes cancer. And of the ones who do understand, many of them think it's just kind of a liquor thing. So I appreciate your support in sharing this episode and getting this info out there. And again, please don't be afraid. What's done is done. You can't undo all of the years of drinking that you did. All you can do now is move forward with not drinking, getting support to stay on the not drinking path, and adjusting your lifestyle so that it's a little bit healthier than it was a month ago. And I will talk to you next week. 